so what I would love is, is Dave, could you explain in five minutes the different economies, the agriculture? Yeah. Okay, so if Dave's going to do that for five minutes, and then I have no idea what's going to happen after that. So if you have an idea, you want to get up and speak, or you want to break into small groups, or you have questions, or whatever. But this is really intriguing. This is like the, the next dimension in business. Here's a, so you know kind of like um, where I'm coming from. Most people, most people, uh, I think, in business, don't realize kind of what's coming down the road next, right? Um, and that's because what's coming down the road next happens in high school, right? So, and the thing that, that cued me up to this is that, um, you see the movie Pompeii, right? Pompeii has something called a forum, right? And so in the forum, what you had was you had the way that the communities interacted in in all the different worlds, in the ancient worlds. Here, we've kind of developed over the last hundred years by virtue of the railroad, all right? So our agricultural exploitation is really what has now ramped your population in the world. Our ability to push food out and to use food to control people is really what's driving your economy, all right? So we've amplified the, if you follow the, the, pop, the population grid over the last 6,000 years, it goes like this, all right? What this is is the introduction of American farming. That's what's new in the world. All right. But you go back to Pompeii, 79 AD, all right, you see this, you see this this grid, this footprint, all right? Now at the top of Pompeii you had a temple to Jupiter. Okay? The bottom of Pompeii you have your government buildings. And everyone pretty much knows your religion and your government always goes together. All right? So you have your ideas, your philosophy, and then you have your applications, your government. Your government protects your ideas. We value people's individual personal relationship with God. Therefore, freedom. Therefore, we protect freedom. You can believe what you want to believe in America. Right? We trust that God will find you personally. Right? What I didn't see at the time is that over here, there's a thing called a temple to Apollos. Right? That was your athletic facility. And over here was your business district, your marketing district. So, your athletics builds your military, which protects your enterprise. It also builds the mindset underneath which your enterprise works. And so what's happened is that when you look at athletics today, it's kind of like seeing a footprint of what your business is going to be like in 10 years. Right? Look at the dynamics. We teach football. We teach kids how to take land. So we have a land-based concept of economy. Okay? What's changing is that our ability to look at land as valuable, which was developed from an agricultural standpoint, then moved into an industrial age, has now transformed into what I call an age of velocity movement. So everyone's talking about you know how, how movement is. Well, the, we talked to a couple guys early on. When you think about agriculture, all right, you're thinking about something that you can plant and it grows on its own. It has its own capacity to produce something. All right, you plant the seeds, the seeds are going to germinate, they're going, to, they're going to come, and you just have to guide it, okay? When you go into an industrial age, and now you start looking at taking the resources on the earth and creating something, that something has autonomy, right? Now it's going to have value outside of it. It can't grow on its own, right? But it has an autonomy <coughs> that's going to be valuable as something that's distinct from it. So you can negotiate that, okay? Now we move into a service age, and we're dealing with people, and people are the economy. Incidentally, economy just means what you teach at home. It's a word from oikos. So it, it's really kind of what we're teaching when kids are young. Right? That's its root, its origin. So when you look at what's happening now, how relationships are negotiated all right, are the things that is driving our economy. The problem is, is that every person needs to be fed. They need to be cared for. They need to have resources in them. They be, and that's what our stress is right now, is how to be able to then manage the process where now you have everybody that needs something, rather than on the other side of the agricultural economy, where it doesn't need something to grow. All right? And there's our, there's our big stress, there's our big dilemma, with a huge tsunami of people coming in that all need to be given something that's meaningful to do. All right? Now here's the other piece, is that if you look at your time, right, your talents and your treasures, right, and you look at those things, a lot of people look at negotiating time for money. And I'm going to offer that's 
you're already, if you're thinking that, you're already out of date. Okay? What's coming up underneath are people that understand that this just makes you a slave. And that's all it will ever do because the only land you're ever really going to own is going to be your talents. And so if you don't develop your talents, you're going to be SOL. Right? If you don't have something that's going to build your capacity to have something. Now, what's a talent? Right? When I use the word talent, what I mean is I mean I have a natural ability. Okay? However, I'm getting old. If I'm an athlete, eventually someone's going to beat me in my athletic ability. Right? I have a spiritual gift, something that's eternal. Unless the seed dies, my shell is removed. The life inside of me cannot bear fruit. So my spiritual gift is dependent upon my natural abilities coming to terms with the idea that I'm going to die. That it's not going to go forever. Right? That that's going to end. So therefore, then my gift can be released. Now, if you take those two things and you understand what a talent is, and we know what a talent really is, I'm sure this, if, most people don't. It's 50 to 70 pounds. It was a weight measurement. Right? It was used to measure seed potential. And so what you have is you take your shell, your abilities, your gifts, your potential. Now you look at talent, that's your replicable ability. Right? How much seed can that produce inside of a crop? That was the metaphor. So what can your abilities and then your gifts produce in the next generation becomes the question. Right? What can you give away? What do you have that's valuable enough for the next generation to want? And, and do you have a mindset that allows you actually to look at having talents, which then are extensions into that younger generation? Right? Most people, when they look at this, they look at it you know, for what does talent do for me? It's the exact opposite. A talent isn't even engaged until you give it away to the next generation because it is all about the replication of what's valuable in you. Right? And so if a guy had five talents, Five different kinds of fields. Barley, wheat, hay. Five different kinds of things that he could do. The guy with one talent, scared about losing it. Doesn't put it into the next generation, tries to hold it onto himself, gets it taken away, give it to the one with ten. He goes on and he produces more. All right? Because he had a vision for the next generation. In the Bible, there's a statement at the end of the Old Testament, right before the New Testament comes in, the last statement, at that time I'll send the prophet Elijah and he will turn the hearts of the fathers toward the children, and the hearts of the children toward the fathers, or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. Right? You know, the, the things that deal with heroin, right, the, you know, why I use the phone metaphor, is because it'd be silly to put all your time and energy into developing somebody, only to shove them down the toilet, only to take and to let him go to heroin addiction, because you weren't thinking about that part of it. So, this this is this is important and, and and so Dave talks has talked in some of our times in the Jerusalem project on the on the the, the difference between um, if we give money versus uh, having the government uh, <laughs> extricated out of us and how stupid and inefficient it is to not be givers can you share the difference because you had some interesting math on that here's what here's what, yeah it's really funny. Um, we have gone into a time where we lost charity. We don't know what charity is anymore. Right? We look at charity as kind of like negotiating our human emotions because we're in a lost economy. The lost economy tends to us rather than it tends to actually the process of sacrificing ourselves. Okay? So you used to have two sides. You had church and state. You had charity and you had business. Okay? Profit, self, all right? and lack of self, which is charity. Charity means sacrifice. Okay? So what would manage this, right? would be on the church side, what you'd have is a local concentration. The church was a, a shell that was given to a community to tithe. And that tithe would be a resource that the community then could use for local context. The local church in America is really our socialism. Right? If you don't tithe inside the context of a local integration, this is where we're having a hard time because we have different cultures that see the church as being the advocacy for their own belief system or their own cultural background. That's not what the church is in America. The church in America is all the people inside of a local area figuring out how to sacrifice their resource for the betterment of everybody in that community. Right? I say churches should probably give a tithe to the local city municipality and pay for your police and pay for your... That would be smart. Right? If you don't tithe, here's the other side. 
is on the government. The government manages all business, so they structure all the, the problems. If people don't give willingly, then you get taxed, right? So you know, tithing gets taxed. If you're not going to look and say, well, I don't really want to give up 10%, they'll manage it with 40% and be, you know, 10 times less efficient in the process. That's why you have high taxes. It's just because we avoid sacrifice for the sake of our local constituency because we don't like them, <coughs> our neighbors, and we don't get along with them for whatever, so we don't feel like it's our need to help them. We'll advance it to the government, and we'll pay 10 times as much. It's a very poor business decision. It's crazy.